Hello everyone and welcome to this our latest um, live broadcast from Capital City College Group. Today we're looking at higher education courses for those careers in the creative industries and we've got a great program for you this afternoon. Um, we'll be with each other for about the next hour so until four o'clock we have a live Q&A facility available as well so if any questions pop up during our presentations please do jot them down on our Q&A and we'll do our best to answer them straight away. So first up at, uh, well, just in a few minutes when I finish talking, will be David Jenkins. He's from Westminster Kingsway College and he'll be talking about the HNC that we have in creative media production. Uh, next up is Sharon Wallace. She works for the College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London and she'll be talking about the foundation year course, which can lead to a number of exciting career paths in the creative industries, but I'll, uh, I won't do any spoilers, so I'll let Sharon to tell you all about that. And then last but by no means least, we have Tim Chaundy, who is um, we're going to be talking about our HNC our, in performing arts in uh, that's run by the uh, City in Islington College. Um, and that's an HNC in performing arts. And then the all important session with my colleague Nomi, who will be talking about student finance as well, which is uh, obviously really important how to uh, fund your your studies with us. And um, there's some good news on that, but I won't again, I won't uh, steal Nomi's thunder. She can talk to you about that um, when it's her turn. So why would you come to us? Why would you come to the Capital City College Group? Well, Choosing one of our colleges for your uh, higher education course would be a really good idea. Obviously, we're biased, we would say that. Um, our courses are career focused. That gives you the skills, the experience um, and the qualities that you need out there in the industry. Um, our lecturers have got heaps of industry experience in the subjects that they teach, which enables them to give you a real insight into the opportunities and challenges of working in the sector. Um, we work with employers as well and creative organisations um, to give you plenty of experience um, as well as learning and networking opportunities. And even during lockdown, we have found that we've been able to provide useful, valuable work experience for many of our students. Uh, we also pride ourselves in the high level of support that we give to our students and with small group sizes and regular tutorials. You'll benefit from lots of opportunities to question, probe and try things for yourself. Our HNCs in particular cost a lot less than studying university. So that's always a bonus in these difficult times. And you can still get financial support through student loans as well. So as I said, my colleague Naomi will be talking to you a little bit more about that later on. And we can also offer additional support with practical issues such as mental health, childcare, financial support and careers. So I think that kind of wraps it up for me. So uh, moving to our schedule, as I've said a little bit earlier, first up is David Jenkins. He's a lecturer and course tutor on our HNC Creative Media Production Film and VFX course, and he will be able to tell you all about that right now. Welcome. Um, thanks very much for coming along. I hope you're going to find some uh, answers to some of the questions you're probably going to be putting to us later on, but give us a chance to tell you about some of the wonderful opportunities that we have here at, uh, at our um, college group. So I'm here, as you can see, to talk about uh, film and visual effects at Westminster Kingsway College. Um, normally at this sort of time of year, I'd be inviting you in to have a look around our facilities and to see for yourselves what we can offer. But uh, obviously, for perfectly obvious reasons, we can't do that at the moment. So this is this is our answer to how we deal with the, the lockdown situation we've been in for a while, uh, which is to give you a chance to talk to us directly and to have a look at, uh, in my case, uh, a, a brief video which will show you uh, what we can offer in the location we are. So one of the things that we are very proud of uh, at Westminster Kingsway College is the fact that we have a fantastic media centre which is based right in the heart of Soho. And so, as you probably know, is the uh, well, currently, certainly has been for a number of years, is the centre of the, uh, certainly the European, possibly the world uh, post-production industry. Um, and it's um, the home to many of those famous companies that you would have seen winning Oscars over the years for their work on things like uh, Jungle Book and um, all the sort of the wonderful films, Lion King, etc., that you've probably been watching 
uh, and enjoying for a number of years now. So it's a great location to be. You're surrounded by uh, fantastic organizations and great, great opportunities to network with people. So I think maybe what we'll do first of all is to uh, is to maybe kick off and have a look and, and see if we can have a quick look at that video that we've got coming up for you now. This really is a fantastic nationally recognised media facility. It creates an interface between the worlds of work and education. It's slap bang in the middle of Soho. So we've got 150 world recognised post-production and film production companies within 500 metres of where I'm sitting now. I think the best thing about studying at Westminster Kingsway was like the practical aspect of the course, because you were able to actually have a hands-on approach and having great teachers to basically who are knowledgeable to give you this constant feedback in terms of your development. Students get to enjoy around us here that have been described by the BTEC external examiner that we have as being the best you've seen anywhere outside of Media City in Manchester. Due to the location being in the centre of Soho, students who work here get an opportunity to work alongside professionals from a whole range of fields, from TV to film, special effects and advertising. So a fantastic opportunity for them to be rubbing shoulders with professionals. Once I got to university, I found that compared to other students, I had a better view on how um, work should be presented. Here, people are always coming in and out from industry, whereas uni is like, they'll have like industry speakers that come once in a while. But here, there's always someone coming through the corridor. They can just say hello to you and say what you're doing sort of thing. Probably most importantly is the fact that students get an opportunity here to make industry contacts and networks uh, with people working in the industry that they can e exploit later on and uh, use for employment and production uh, opportunities that basically can be and very often have been life and career changing. We are oh, we're having a lot, a lot, lot of fun. fun I love yeah. it here. Yeah. So um, I hope, hope you found that informative and interesting. Um, I, I think one of the great things that you will appreciate if you do come and study with is the fact that it is a small facility. Uh, it's very focused. Um, if you want to study film, you want to study visual effects, the only other people you're going to meet in this facility are people who are studying film or visual effects or who are actually working in the industry. So as you saw in the film, we're constantly rubbing shoulders with industry professionals who come in and use the facility because the studio is for commercial hire. Uh, so any day of the week, you never quite know who you're going to be bumping into, um, famous names uh, as, as well as newcomers who are constantly coming in and using the facility. Great opportunity for students to actually see how professionals work. So as I mentioned in the film, it's that interface which is so important, I think, the interface between education uh, and between industry. So. We offer um, two pathways on the HNC Creative Media Productions, you probably realise by now. Um, the, the one that I'm going to initially talk about is the film pathway. Um, this is the, 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 um, uh, the pathway that you would have seen reference to, uh, I think, in probably most in the film you've just been watching. So let's have a look and see how this uh, is constructed. It's, it's like most HNC courses, it's made up of a series of, of units. In this case, there's eight units in total made up of mandatory specialist and optional units. So you can see for yourselves that there's a number of, the mandatory ones are ones which are constant right across the HNC Creative Media Production um, range of courses that we offer. Uh, the specialist units are specialized and are just taught as part of the film pathway. So as you can see, the critical um, differences between this and the visual effects are in that sort of purple color. So film studies, TV studio production and film practices are three units that you would just simply study on this pathway and not study on the visual effects 
pathway. The optional units are not optional in the sense that you get to choose them, but that we, we get to choose them. And these are ones that we choose based on what we think our specialism is within um, the center. So we're very hot on cinematography, as you'd expect, being a film course. And we also place a great importance on the role of editing for our students, most of whom at some point rather probably will be going straight into the industry. Um, so that's the the basic um, way in which we structure a film course. If this is the film pathway for creative media production. So if we look at the the next option, this is the uh, the VFX option. You'll notice that there are similarities. The mandatory core units are exactly the same. Um, so, for example, although there's an individual project on each of those two pathways, uh, it would only differ in as much as if you were doing a visual effects course, your individual project would inevitably be VFX based as opposed to film based. In terms of the visual effects, uh, the specialist units, you can see that we do three which are visual effects practice, visual effects and motion graphics cultures and 3D modeling. So for those of you who are interested in the interface between visual effects and live action, um, those units I think are there to kind of satisfy that specific range of interests. And you'll notice in fact that um, similar to the other uh, option, you also get a chance to study cinematography and editing. OK, so those are the, the two main options that we offer. Um, they have advantages and disadvantages, but it really depends on your range of interests. So I think that's got to be the most important consideration when you're thinking about which of these two pathways you want to go down. Think about what are you interested in? What kind of career do you want to have? Where do you think the job opportunities are going to lie in the future? And then make your choice accordingly. OK, so that I think is, is going to tie things up from from my perspective is that is uh, I think a final. OK, so this is um, just as a little case study. Uh, this is Isaac Charles. Isaac was a student of ours from two years ago and he went on, uh, was picked up by Channel 4 on the apprenticeship scheme uh, when he left the course and is now working uh, as, a, as a full time uh, media producer at Channel 4. So um, the quote it's, itself, you, I'll let you read for yourselves. It's um, I think it kind of sums up what it is that we can offer students who come here. Very personal service. An opportunity to rub shoulders, and I say, and meet industry professionals all the time. Great chance to network and a really great opportunity to do, learn, study and develop right in the heart of Soho, where you're going to be right in the heart of the industry. So thanks very much. Thanks, David. That was fantastic. We've actually got a couple of questions in from the audience, so if I can fire those at you, uh, please. Firstly, um, do I have to choose um, on the application, whether to specialise in film or VFX, or do I get to decide that later on? Well, I think that's a good question, actually. I, I, I Obviously, I, it would depend on the individual. Some people will know exactly what they want to do. My experience, people generally do know. Uh, but if you're unsure, it doesn't matter at this point. You can simply put down one of the options and then the, we can sort of tease out where your interests lie in interview, because obviously I will conduct a, an interview with each candidate. Um, we can talk about pros and cons and the interests that will determine whether or not you do one rather than the other. OK, and presumably with um, lockdown still sort of in place, those interviews would be um, over um, WhatsApp or uh, FaceTime or some yeah. some video service or other. OK, great. great. Super. Um, the other question we've got is, can I carry on to get a degree after the HNC? Yeah, that's absolutely uh, possible. In fact, I would say probably 30 or 40 percent of our students do that every year. So in other words, they complete their HNC, mm -hmm. uh, which is a level four qualification equivalent to first year at university. And in some cases they may choose to go straight on to the first year of a degree course. In some cases where maybe students have slightly more experience or um, maybe slightly older, uh, they may find a course that would take them on to the second year of a degree. So that's that's happened in a number of occasions as well. The other option, of course, is that you can go on and complete second year of uh, an HNC, which is called an HND, a higher national diploma. Uh, and again, that would be a, a very interesting option if, as an alternative, you decided you weren't ready yet to go into work in the industry. 
Okay, and do some students go into work in the industry rather than studying um, further? Kind of roughly what kind of percentage of your students kind of leave and go yeah. straight into work? Yeah, I would say slightly more um, choose to go and work or go into other forms of, of practical training, such as apprenticeships. Um, rather than go to university, but as a, as a, as a healthy number, um, you know, I would say 30 to 40 percent every year choose to go down the HE route. So the great thing about an HNC is it is, a, as, as Neil said, it's a very vocational qualification. So you'll come out with a whole range of really good industry skills and an appreciation of what's required to succeed in the industry. So that's that's very important. At the same time, if you decide you've enjoyed the studying aspect of it, you feel you benefit from a few more years of higher education. Uh, if you like the taste of it, then uh, certainly you will not get, I promise you, as that young woman said in our in our film, you will not get a better introduction to uh, working in HG than you will by doing a year with us. Because frankly, anything that comes after that, you'll, I think uh, you'll be slightly spoiled, I think, by the wonderful experience you'll have with us. Fantastic. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you again, David, for your time. Uh, please do fire any more questions in if you have them. But um, as there aren't any in right now, I think we shall move on to our next presentation, which is from Sharon Wallace. Sharon um, is the curriculum manager for Creative and Media, and she works at one of the other colleges in our group called the College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London. And they have campuses in Tottenham. Um, and in Enfield. And Sharon's here to talk about the foundation year that she um, manages. So Sharon, without further ado, over to you. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for coming along and listening to our talk about um, the HE offers we have here at uh, CCG. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the foundation year. It's a new course that we're running with um, the Digital Institute London. They're based at Here East in Stratford. Um, and this course that we're running with them is the um, computer game design. Uh, there are three pathways. So the first pathway is computer games design. The second pathway is um, games, PR and community management. And then we've got a BA in um, eSports. So um, you'll be sort of working with, if you apply for any of these courses, you'll be working with anyone from any of those three uh, pathways. Uh, can we get to the next slide, please? OK, so just to tell you a little bit about our department, um, we run a range of courses in creative media and music um, from levels one to three. We have actually run an HNC and HND um, in games and animation before. and We've also run HNCs and HNDs in um, music production, um, but this is our first eSports. It's a very new area, but we are not new to running um, higher education courses. And this is a foundation year. It's not to be uh, confused with a foundation degree. Um, but our department basically runs a range of courses in digital media production and uh, games design, animation production, music production and technology. Um, and obviously we'll be running the eSports alongside um, Staffordshire University's Digital Institute. Um, we also run a range of part time courses in photography, video and audio production, music composition, animation and multimedia and uh, content creation. So you can see there that we're used to running creative courses. We have quite a large department with lots of studios. The course itself would be a blended learning approach, which means that you would be coming into college um, at Cornell because we have a quite a large room and it's large enough to hold um, the entire group. Um, and we also have some breakout spaces as well. Um, but for Digital Institute London, uh, this year they're running the um, eSports online, all of their courses they're running online. So um, you, you will be going into their campus in Stratford um, at some point because they'll be running workshops and uh, they have a dedicated sort of eSports arena um, a television studio there. So you will be going in there to do some practical workshops, but the majority of the course will be run online. Um, we do lots of other, um, on our courses, We you learn lots of other skills as well. Um, we do live show editing and streaming, graphic design, ident, special effects, 2D, 3D design, 
concept art, modelling, environment and character creation, production management. Um, we also have uh, audio production for TV and film and uh, we do studio engineering with music and mixing and mastering. So you can see the range of skills that um, your lecturers will have. You'll be taught by two uh, lecturers and they work across the courses in, uh, in the creative courses in Cornell. So just to let you know a little bit about the space we have um, at the college. And as I said, you will be actually coming into the college. We've got seven dedicated Mac suites. Um, you will have your own exclusive foundation year room. So you'll be able to come in and use that room at any time. Um, you have uh, free equipment hire and uh, you can hire resources such as cameras, uh, tablets, uh, sound equipment, etc. Um, we have you have open access uh, to space at all times. Uh, we use 3D software. You'll be using 3D software with us and also um, with Digital Institute. Um, so you'll be using software like Maya and Unity. If you don't have um, the software, the college will be providing access for you. Uh, we use the Creative Adobe Suite and um, I've mentioned already Unity, which is our games engine software. We have uh, two green screens, a recording studio, music recording studios and VR kit. So just to let you know about the three pathways, so with the games industry, the sort of jobs that uh, you could go into um, after completing the four year um, degree would be a uh, games designer or level designer. So you can see the list of courses there under the games industry. If you're more into sort of PR and community management, so looking at running your own esports games, uh, which is a big um, industry at the moment, uh, you could go into any one of the, uh, the um, uh, opportunities um, under community management, so content creator, PR and comms, and also you should um, realise that you, you may not um, use those skills to go into esports. Uh, community and management um, and PR, you could be going into marketing and other avenues as well. Uh, for the esports, um, you can see the range of opportunities you will have after the degree um, and during the degree as well, because we will be working alongside UK, the UK um, interactive and entertainments industry uh, for you to run your own esports events and tournaments. So those are the sort of range of pathways that we offer. And as I said, um, you'll be working together with others um, along that pathway during your first foundation year with a view to moving straight into your second degree year um, at the Digital Institute. So the modules we'll be covering is a range of modules and the four modules you'll cover over the first year. Um, the study skills and professional development. Well, this is mainly a uh, compulsory module. And then we've got three other modules you'll be running. Um, you'll be completing, which is digital media skills for games and esports, um, the digital games production and contemporary issues in esports. So you'll get a range of skills um, not only the practical skills, uh, but also the academic skills that you'll need to complete your degree. OK, so just to tell you a little bit about uh, the college itself and where we're situated. So we have easy access to the Victoria line. Uh, we're right on Seven Sisters tube station. Uh, we have a range of buses that can take you to the college and also very good cycle routes. Um, Basically, you'll build your skills throughout the first year of the degree. So this course is really for someone that may not be may not feel that they're quite ready for a full on um, first year degree course and want to really be supported uh, to start their degree. You'll get lots of support at the college as well as the Digital Institute. And once you complete your first year, you will have direct access to complete your degree with a Staffordshire University at Here East in Stratford. Um, so it's a di uh, direct progression into that course. Um, we have lots of independent and corporate industry links uh, that we work with. 
we do lots of trips and activities. So, for example, we've worked with the third floor visualization, which is a quite a large uh, special effects company. And we've done projects with them. Um, as I say, we are a member of Yuki and we also work with Digital Schoolhouse, uh, which has a direct links to esports tournaments and national and international esports tournaments. Uh, we've worked with the Discovery Channel. BBC Academy, and we also have our own Canal Creative Hub, which enables you to work and meet uh, lots of other students working our creative media department. So that's the end of our, um, my slide actually with uh, the course. I'm not sure if anyone has any questions. So um, is there, are there any questions for me? Yeah. Yes, Sharon. Hi, it's Neil again. Yes, we've got a hi, we've got a couple here. Hello. Um, firstly, um, I'm really interested in computer games. It says, but I haven't actually studied it before. I guess most people that are into computer games probably haven't studied it before. What experience do I need? Uh, you don't need. You do need to be quite proficient on the computer, but you you don't need to have studied uh, computer games before or even media before because you'll be taught from scratch how to use the software and um, you'll be taught from scratch how to um, you know all, all the particular skills you need in order to navigate your way through the course. And as I say, because it's a foundation year, you get a lot of support for your first year before you go into your first degree year. OK, cool. I suppose this is kind of a follow on, but really just for, for my um, for my interest, really. Are there actual um, exams, A-levels, GCSEs that you need to have to be able to get on the course in the first place? Yes, you do need to have a level three qualification. So it may be someone that has done a level three qualification before. It could be an A-level or it could mm -hmm. be a vocational level three. Um, and you just let, um, generally need a pass grade. Uh, we don't accept anyone coming straight from a level two qualification. You must have completed a level three. So it's no GCSEs, but A levels or an A level at least. Yeah. yeah. OK, great. And finally, uh, the other question we've had in exams aren't my strong point. Um, will there be lots of coursework instead? There is lots of coursework, but lots of practical coursework as well as theoretical coursework, because remember, you are building your skills. Um, and building your own portfolio when you start the course. So there is a lot of coursework, but it is about 50% uh, practical and 50% theory. OK, grand. Um, I'll just double check. If we have any more questions coming? Uh, nope, that's it for now. Sharon, thank you ever so much for your time. That was really, really interesting. Um, and now um, for something slightly different. Um, we have Tim, Tim Chaundy who's our course manager and curriculum leader for performing arts and music. And he works for the City and Islington College. And he's here to talk about an HNC course in performing arts. Over to you, Tim. Hello, everyone. And uh, welcome. Uh, yes, my name is Tim. I am the course manager and curriculum leader for the performing arts department, but the course manager for the higher national certificate in performing arts. Um, all the photos you're going to see here are obviously of our students in, in various productions. And as David said uh, at the start of today's um, uh, webinar, um, you know, usually now we'd be uh, performing right in the coming right to the end of our summer season of performances. We usually have uh, 10 or 12 different performances, um, so we really miss that. Um, but we're here now to tell you about the course. Next slide, please. So we're a dynamic, successful and experienced department. Um, there's a lot of practice going on. It's a very vibrant place to learn and to train. Um, we have excellent resources. Um, so there's always something going on, someone learning a dance somewhere or some singing going on in, in, in one of our singing spaces. Uh, we're successful in the sense that we've had students go on to a variety of different drama schools, uh, mainly in London, some, some in America as well. Um, we've also had work that's also transferred to the National Theatre over the years. Um, and we're very experienced, very close knit. Our, our staff team is almost like a family uh, because we're used to working quite intensely intensively together um, we have strong industry links we've got the park theater in Finsbury Park which is just down the road uh, we have a strong link with them our students can go and volunteer to uh, be front of house ushers so they can get to see free theater um, we have strong community links um, we have angel shed 
uh, which is probably Britain's leading inclusive theatre company based in our theatre, uh, the N7 Theatre. Um, and all our students who study on the HNC can also uh, train to be an inclusive theatre practice. Our main link is with the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, which is where I also trained. Um, and so all students have a series of masterclasses throughout the year uh, where they can meet recent graduates, also establish practitioners and develop their, their skills so they're ready for industry or to go to drama school or uni. One of the things we're extremely proud about, especially, especially in the current climate, is diversity. Um, you know, we, we live in this wonderful multicultural uh, city and we try and represent that diversity through and through. So that's both in the kind of plays that we choose. We try and choose really international plays. So recently um, our students, they would have performed or they, they did an online performance of uh, the Ramayana, which is an Indian classic. Um, we also um, last year did a, a devised piece where we performed different tales from around the world and also also in terms of our methodology, the way we teach, uh, we try and include also different practices like yoga and meditation as part of, of the course design as well. So in terms of the course design, as, as has already been mentioned, one of the beauties of studying a HNC um, is the small group. So we usually have 12 to 14 students, so it's very intimate. We get to know you really well. It's a warm and friendly environment. Um, so that's a real plus point, uh, as a lot of unis, especially even studying drama nowadays, you're, you're going to be in a group of maybe 40 to 50 students. So you sometimes lack that intimacy with the lecturers and tutors. It's assignment and coursework based, um, so there's no exams. Um, so it's all about um, reflecting and, and, and research. That's the main kind of theoretical part of it. Um, and then a lot of practice, as, as mentioned before, in voice work and so on. I'll talk about the units uh, in the next slide. In terms of um, creating work as part of an ensemble, um, that is really key. It's about uh, uh, really working together as part of a team. Um, and you know the, the group that you uh, you work with for the year they're very much like your family it's a very diverse group and um, you really get to know each other well you also learn the academic and study skills needed um, obviously I've mentioned research and evaluation that's a key part that's needed whether you go straight into the industry or to higher education and overall skills development um, I'll mention now as we move into the next slide so it's um, eight units over one year, as are all HNCs. The top two here, professional development and performing arts industry, are mandatory, so they're compulsory. They're set by Pearson, our examining board, our awarding body. Um, so in terms of professional development, you'll develop an actor's CV. Um, you will develop your uh, communication skills. You will plan a five-year uh, or create a five-year plan. Um, performing arts industry is about looking at um, contemporary issues, what's going on in the industry right now, um, and then creating a presentation about that. Um, then you have the more practical um, units, devising theatre, um, movement for the actor, voice and speech, acting, singing, and acting for camera. All of those modules are the, the type of modules that you would then study in the second or third year of higher education. And as it says there, it, the HNC is equivalent to the first year of university. And many of our students go into the second year um, of a, a drama school or uni, although most drama schools want you to start in the first year uh, for their training. Next slide, please. So broadly speaking, the, uh, the course is set semesterized and we have two main projects. The first project is a school's performance, um, which we'll have to redesign slightly in the current climate. Usually it's a school's tour. Last uh, last academic year, uh, the, the students performed to maybe about one and a half thousand students over two weeks. So it was a really intensive experience going out there and performing to um, a, a live audience of young people. That's a devised piece. Then, this, then, if we move on to the next slide, please. 
in the second semester, it's a fully realized production. Uh, we have a designer comes in who designs the set uh, and the costume and so on. Um, and it is uh, more, if you like, a traditional setup in terms of creating uh, a fully produced theatre performance. And I think at this point, it might be good to see a little bit of the student work. Um, so we'll show you a little bit of that. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a little flavour of some of the performances. So the last one there was the most recent one, which we took out uh, to, uh, to primary schools and performed and the students created themselves. Um, and what you can see here now um, is some quotes from some of the people we've worked with. We always uh, try to uh, engage with industry and get industry practitioners to come and teach. So we were very lucky uh, last year to have Carolina Giametta, um, who's an award winning director and filmmaker um, who came and ran our acting for camera module. Um, and she says here that she was delighted to work with our students. Um, it's a highly practical course. But what was really exciting uh, was that Carolina actually went through a fake casting with the students. So she did a fake John Lewis casting so the students could really experience what it's like to go up for a cast casting and audition. And then this is an extra project that we actually run with Goldsmiths University. Um, it's a writing project. So their master's students, their master's playwriting students come and work with our, our uh, HNC students and they actually write them a play for them. So they get to know our students and then they write a specific piece for them. And this is under the guidance of Ned Glacier, who is um, the artistic director of the award winning Young People's Company. It used to be called Islington Community Theatre. It's now known as Com Company three. So that's another exciting project there to give you a flavour of our industry work. So in terms of um, our resources, we have a professional studio theatre that you saw there in the clip. Uh, we also have a professional dance studio. Um, both of those spaces are hired out to theatre companies and dance companies in the evenings when students aren't using them. Uh, we have music practice rooms, uh, music production, max suite, and then two smaller drama and dance studios, which can always be booked for open access by students uh, when, when they're not being used. So what our students say, 
So uh, this is from this year's HNC group, um, who are just finishing now. Um, they say um, that we're a dedicated and experienced team who believe in your potential to succeed. Um, we are uh, we are able to work with you're able to work with like minded and passionate people and create a wonderful show as part of a family. There really is nothing like it. And the masterclasses and speaking to the actors working in the industry are really inspiring. So this is a little uh, clip here of our one of our current international students. Nicole uh, was studying here. She came over from the Philippines um, and uh, yes, yeah, she, she'll give you a flavor of uh, her, her time this year. Parts of this course would be anything practical, really. Even the walking around the space, I thought that was fun. <laughs> and um, of course, devising, you know, you're in a room full of creative, imaginative people. Um, and then to be able to create a wonderful show and perform that in front of 100 students and getting great feedback from them. I think that is amazing. And another would be going to workshops and oh, and inviting alumni that are working in the industry. I thought that, that was very inspiring because um, yeah, it gave us a glimpse of what it is like to be working in the industry and how to get there. So that's a really long process, but, um, but yeah, I thought that was um, very helpful for me. And of course, as an international student, at first I thought I would have troubles getting along with people, but it turns out I have met such diverse, talented and creative people whom I have mad respect and no doubt that they will make it someday. And of course, the teachers who um, always um, kept pushing us, you know, and help us discover skills that we don't, with, that we didn't know we have. Overall, I've enjoyed my uh, my time as a student in Sydney and Islington, and I hope you will too. So good luck. Okay, and the last couple of slides. Um, yeah, so it's about progression really, which is obviously really key. I would say about 80% of our students progress to higher education from the course. Um, as I've mentioned, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, we have a very strong link with them. Um, and often our students go into applied theatre, so that's more community-based theatre uh, on that course. Uh, then we have Middlesex University, Goldsmiths University, who we also work with really closely, University of East London, one of our lecturers also lectures there, um, and some students go straight into industry. Um, we've had students uh, go straight into theatre work um, directly after the course, and there's a range of different things they go into, obviously acting um, is the three year BA course, then you have theatre arts, which is more of a university based course, and then technical theatre. Some students decide to go um, into the backstage area, costume and lighting and so on. But if you really want to get a good uh, glimpse of what we do, um, if you move on to the next slide, um, get onto our social media because we have a, a really good uh, Twitter and Instagram at underscore candy arts and we've got a new uh, performing arts CBAT YouTube channel uh, where there are lots of different things you can see there to kind of really see what our HNC and what our department, our performing arts department is about. Uh, that's it for me. If there are any questions, do you fire away. Thanks Tim, that was fantastic. Um, got a couple of questions here. Um, firstly, um, I've been working a while, so this course would be something that I'm coming back to after work. Yeah. Would that be okay? Can I can I join the course? Totally, totally. Actually, we have a student this year, uh, Fernando, um, who did a few courses with CCCG and decided then he wants to do performing arts. Um, he's 38 years old, came back to it and he, he fitted straight in. Um, it's a really lovely grown up environment. Um, still very playful, but you know, you, yes, you can totally, uh, totally fit in at whatever age. Cool. So mature students, very much yeah. welcome. Great. Um, yeah. And other question is, will you be able to help me get acting experience? I guess that's an important one as well for people who perhaps not taken to the stage before. 
Yes, I mean, throughout the course, you're doing practical acting work um, pretty much every day. You'll do some form of performance or acting class. Um, and then in the final semester for the final fully produced production, we invite agents to come down to that. And a lot of agents are getting more and more interested in, in coming to the smaller showcases like uh, City and Islington College. Um, so they get more unusual um, and diverse uh, students that, that want to maybe not do the traditional classic three year training at RAD. Uh, they want to do something maybe shorter and get straight in the, into the industry. Um, so yeah, the acting experience you'll get throughout and then we'll try and link you up in the industry afterwards as best as we can. Fantastic. Thank you, Tim. That's wonderful. I'll just double check we don't have any more questions. Nope, that's it. So thank you very much for your time, Tim. That's enormously helpful. Yes. So that's all three presentations uh, done and dusted for today, but we uh, have a very important session coming up with um, Naomi and she's going to talk all about student loans and financial support. Over to you Naomi. Yes, hello everyone. Well, the good news is that help is available when it comes to funding your studies and student loans are available from the government through Student Finance England. So what exactly is a student loan? Well, student loans can include both a tuition fee loan and a maintenance loan. And tuition fee loans, as the name suggests, cover the cost of your course, so that's the tuition fees. And tuition fee loans are paid directly to the college or university. Maintenance loans are paid into your bank account at the start of each term, and they help you with all your day-to-day -day living expenses. And the amount that you, you get in your maintenance loan will depend on things like your household income, where you're studying and where you live. Now on the gov.uk website, there's a student finance calculator that can help you work out what you might receive in terms of a maintenance loan. And at this point, we just also want to say that if you're an EU student, you should check the gov.uk um, website for the latest information about applying for courses starting this year. So when will you repay your student loan? Well, you only start to repay your loan when you're earning over £26,575 per year. So it's not too onerous. And, you know, if you if you stop working or your income goes below the threshold, you, your repayments automatically stop. If you fall ill, your loan may be cancelled. And if you haven't paid off your loan um, after 30 years, then your loan will be written off at that point. And how much will you repay? Well, you only repay 9% of the amount that you'll be earning over the threshold. So, and the threshold is currently £25,716 per year. So here's just a bit of an example to help you contextualise it. So for, if you're earning about £30,000 a year, your monthly income is going to be about £2,500. So that's just £357 over the monthly threshold, which is £2,143. So that means that each month you're only going to be paying back £32 um, a month. So that's not too bad at all. So how do you apply for a student loan? Well, you need to apply through Student Finance England, which is online at the gov.uk website. Um, you can apply for your tuition fee and your maintenance loan at the same time. And the good news is you don't need a confirmed offer of, place, of a place to apply. So, you know, it's a good idea to start your application um, early just to make sure you've got enough time to gather any evidence and deal with any mistakes as applications take about six weeks to be processed. Um, but what Student Finance England will do is they'll do an initial assessment to make sure that you get some money as close to the start of your course as possible. And if you've not quite made up your mind about whether you are going to, to study, then don't worry, you can because you can change your mind later. You apply for your loan now, but you can still change your mind. Um, you will need to reapply for student finance for each year of your course, and you should keep your details up to date as some changes may affect your loan payments. And there is a step-by-step -step guide on the gov.uk website just to take you each step through the process. If you need any more information or an advice, then I would advise that you check out these websites, Money Saving Expert, which and UCAS. They give you lots of advice on budgeting, money saving tips and, um, and more information. Now, tomorrow, this is about now about applying for your course. Um, if you want to apply for a course with Capital City College Group, tomorrow is actually the cutoff date for applying through UCAS. Um, that's for applying during normal time, but it doesn't mean you can't apply. 
If you apply after the 30th, your application will be entered into clearing. Now, during clearing, we'll have a clearing phone number advertised on our websites for you to call to apply. But if you're still hoping to get your application in before the 30th, you should apply through UCAS if you're applying for more than one course. But if this is going to be your one and only choice, of course, you can apply directly to us via the college website. And finally, you can find further information about all of our courses and becoming a student of ours, including policies, on our group website, which is capital ccghe.co.uk. OK, Neil, so back over to you. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so you've heard from our three colleges. So that's Westminster Kingsway, uh, the College of Enfield, Haringey and North East London. And lastly, uh, Tim from the City and Islington College. I hope that was interesting and helpful. Those website addresses are there in front of you. Um, so do uh, apply for the course or courses that you'd like to go on and we'd be delighted to receive your application and have a good chat with you about your options. So uh, hope that's been helpful and useful. Um, just double checking, we don't have any more questions in the Q&A. Nope, so it's all the questions we've had so far. We'll make this video available to uh, everyone so you can review it again at your leisure and also uh, encourage your friends to have a look at it too, to find out more about the courses that we offer. So I think all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the last 55 or so minutes with us and we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks very much.